Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Heather. And here is her story. Hi, Ollie. First of all, thank you for reading my story. You need to wear your big boy pants to fight the succubus and her willing minions. A commenter asked where to get the donut shaped penis soap. Sorry, I don't know. I have taken your recommendations to heart and there was a conversation with my husband about the danger of exposing our kids to the narc. And you were right, they were they are both narcs, meaning my father in law and his wife. My father in law was raised by a narc. I also listened to your stories about obesity and hoarding. I see how the narc can be obese. Wait, I see how the narc being obese can control people around him or her. But what about the scapegoat's obesity? I have two examples. The succubus son is very heavy. He is very tall, like 6'7", but weighs over 400 pounds. My father-in-law's sister was basically a shut-in because she was so heavy. She spent her life single and living with her mother, <clears throat> my husband's grandmother, who they, who they called the Dragon Lady. I heard that she did have a serious boyfriend once, but once but that the dragon lady ran him off. I never knew the dragon lady, but have heard some disturbing stories. She told my mother-in-law on her wedding day to her son, I made him just the way I want him. Don't you go changing him. Sounds a little narkish there. Yeah. And it makes sense with all the, uh, with the obesity problems because, you know, obesity is a control like when, when, when you overeat it's because it's immediate gratification it's something you can control and when you have an overbearing mother who probably makes son husbands and daughter friends okay and so controlling and so overbearing and you have no control over your your own life you just shovel food in your mouth because it's at least something you can control Something where you're getting instant gratification that you can control. And that's where the, the obesity comes from. Anyway, she died when my husband was a child. But I wonder if the Dragonwood lady's narc abuse of her daughter all those years led to her morbid obesity, which ended up killing her. Of course it did. Of course it did. Obese, it's confident because they take your confidence. They take your sense of self. They take your sense of individuality they take your sense of being able to make a decision on your own and to be happy on your own but food you either like it or you don't so the foods you like and the ones that are comfort and the sugar and all that you're so starved you're so starved for self-gratification that food becomes your comes your bridge to be able to get any type of self-soothing because you're so self because you're so starved in other areas also and this just hit me the dragon lady was german you've mentioned in other videos about strong links to certain cultures by the way i have some good news i found out this morning from my sister-in-law the scapegoat's son's wife that my father-in-law and the succubus will probably not be moving back to the Atlanta area for at least another two years. The succubus fell through a makeshift dock at a boat show and hurt her back and is suing anyone even remotely involved. Well, instead of settling the case out of court, these people are fighting it. The succubus lawyer thinks it will take a couple of years at least until they even go to court. They really won't even be able to move until they get that settlement. I think it's interesting that they are fighting, that they are fighting her. It's always cheaper to settle out of court. Maybe they tried and the succubus wouldn't accept what they offered. She told my sister-in-law that she expects millions of dollars from this lawsuit. Yet yeah, that's the issue right there. Is she's got it in her mind that she can win millions of dollars. And she won't. And she won't. For what she's asking and her delusions of grandeur for them to take it to trial if she actually fell and hurt if they tried to settle with her and now they're going to trial her demands are so unreasonable okay even if they lose in court it won't be anything near what what she's expecting so i it'll probably it's probably the best thing for you to, for it to happen because whatever she does get is going to be eaten up 
in lawyer fees for, for cost of trial. The cost of the trial is going to cost, is going to eat up whatever she wins. It's going to be hilarious. Side note, my mother was recently injured in a car accident that has her in physical therapy for her hip. She has hired a lawyer to get her, to get her to get her something for her pain and suffered and for her pain and suffering but only realistically expects a couple thousand dollars. How does splashing through a DACA at a boat show because you're fat get you millions? It's the entitlement. She's entitled, that's why. She's got delusions of grandeur because they've spent all their money and they and they have a certain expectation of a lifestyle. So they see this as a, liter, as a winning lottery ticket. They're overplaying their hand. This is the narcissist overplaying their hand. Let them. Let them. My father-in-law and the succubus are in town this week for the succubus' daughter's wedding. And, of course, the succubus has made this event all about her as much as she was able. In fact, what she has done is made herself the maid of honor. She completely hijacked the bridal shower from the maid of honor when she decided that what was being planned just wasn't good enough for her daughter. She changed the date to the maid of honor's 40th birthday and demanded that each bridesmaid pay her $300 to put this new shower on. I would have told her to go fucking pound sand. This is when the shower is. You don't come in and start moving shit. I think there were five bridesmaids. Only three could make it a new date. My sister-in-law told me only 13 people came. There were 60 invited. So they let her come in and sabotage that shit. My mother tried to do the same thing to my ex-wife's bridal shower. She, but luckily, my, my wife's maid of honor. I didn't like her, but she knew how to handle my... And boy, did her and my mother lock horns. And boy, was that funny. The succubus sent an email to all the bridesmaids telling them that the bride is so upset with them because they are not helping. They came to the bride with the email and the bride was furious with her mother for sending it because she wasn't upset with them at all. She actually keeps apologizing to them now because of how her mother is acting. She should have just sent her mother away. Like she's going to have to deal with this woman eventually. The bride bought a very nice rest dress off the rack. The succubus had had a gown made for herself. And get this, it's the same color as the bridesmaid's dresses. She actually wanted to wear her wedding dress to her daughter's wedding, not that she could fit into it. You know, that was something my Virginia used to talk about that she should have worn her wedding dress. Oh God. The succubus told the maid of honor, you need to make yourself available to me for the wedding and reception because of my back. If I have to stand for something, you need to be ready to bring me a chair. See, this is it. She thinks it's her wedding. She's trying to steal her daughter's wedding from her and make it... I've. The bride wanted to invite her father to her wedding. The succubus has claimed over and over that he was abusive to her and bipolar. She was successful for many years, keeping her daughter from even having a relationship with her father, but they have reconciled. The succubus threatened not to come to the wedding or reception if her ex was there. He was uninvited. She has her claws deep in her daughter. But she has seen during this wedding planning how manipulative and untruthful her mother has been. I don't know if it will change things, but my sister-in-law has been talking to her about your channel and other narc abuse channels. I feel sorry for her. Wedding planning is supposed to be a joyful occasion. Instead, she's had to put out fire after fire. I'm sure I hear all about the wedding next week from my sister-in-law. I asked her to wear my husband's Gorpro on her head, but she won't. Thanks for your time. I hope you have a great weekend. (laughs) 
that's horrendous thing to do to her father. That is absolutely horrendous. I guess they haven't reconciled then, huh? You know, this is another person in your family that needs to put their big girl pants on. She lets this woman come in and run her friends, run her, run her bridesmaids around, push her around, take over her wedding, and then uninvite her father. What is her, who is she marrying, and, and when is he going to get ahead of this? This is a disaster. This is a disaster. What an awful, awful, awful woman. Like, but women just, some women just can't let the bitterness of a divorce go and That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Okay, if that is an evidence... If that is an evidence that you need to stay away forever and because that's what that woman is capable of doing to her own daughter. Wow. Wow. I feel terrible for the father. I feel absolutely horrendous for the father. How do you do that? And doesn't anybody think enough of your sister-in-law to sit her down and say, you can't do this. This woman is out of control. Okay, this woman will destroy you. This woman got you to uninvite your own father. Granted, there was a divorce and there were years, but you reconciled and you know this woman is a problem. 13 out of 60 invites showed up. What is that? And she doesn't see it? She's going to have her, her wedding absolutely ruined. And I don't think she will ever be able to forgive herself. Okay? Eventually, she's going to... If she's already looking at my channel, people are already talking about it. She already sees there's a problem. Okay? She can't fix that. She can't fix uninviting her father from her own wedding. Now, if her father shows up, now if she were to invite her father and then her mother decided not to show, then that's on her mother. That's her mother's decision. But now her mother has made her make a decision she's going to have to live with the rest of her life. You prepared, she prepared for that? She prepared for that? For a person who everyone else probably thinks needs to be cut out of her life, who she knows probably deep down needs to be cut out of her life, is somebody going to sit her down and say, you're about to make a major mistake. You will not get over that guilt. You will not just be able to sweep that under the rug. And you will not help your relationship with your mother one bit. Because if she goes through with that, if she is able to go through with that uninviting her own father to her wedding, then her mother's only going to see that as, well, I got this bitch now. I can run her into the ground till the day I die. Somebody needs to sit, if not you or your husband or your husband or the two of you together and say, you can't do that to your father. How are you going to live with that decision? You're going to have to live with the consequences of that decision the rest of your life. And she's only going to see this as you capitulating to her on something so horrendous that what else can she possibly get you to do now? It's only going to make matters worse. If she invites her dad and your mother doesn't show and her mother doesn't show up, then that's on her mother. Fucker. Fucker.
and if you say it to her and she rejects you for it, then that's on then that's on your sister in law. Then that's on her. Unbelievable. Doesn't sound like you're going anyway, so what a horrible thing. As far as them and the boat and the, the, the boat show and the lawsuit, they're overplaying their hand. Let them. Let them overplay their hand. Good. Sit back, watch them fail, and watch them. And when the, the, when the settlement comes, if they even win, and it all goes to lawyer's fees anyway because they were stupid enough to take a trial, just let the karma take, do its will. But I hope for your sister-in-law's sake and for her dad's sake, somebody steps in and does the right thing. Because that's horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. <sighs> okay. So, thank you again, Heather, for another contribution. And thank you for sending in another story. I hope that helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, a Facebook chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or you would just like to make a contribution to the channel and help it succeed and grow because that's always great because this channel is sponsored and survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you, this all goes away. So you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews, this has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.